welcome to another edition of Entrepreneurs in Fuego, where we're documenting the journey of entrepreneurs one digital footprint at a time. With me, I have the distinct pleasure of having with me the Yap Guru. Am I saying that? Yes, Yap the Yap, Guru. The Yap Guru, Mai Ling Chen. Mai Ling, you have, a, you have an amazing concept, an amazing company. You're probably unlike any other entrepreneur that I've interviewed here at the show. Really? Tell us a, yes. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, um, we are actually in the space of technology and yep. special education. So um, three years ago, we started, I personally started with, bought my iPad, and as a speech pathologist, I thought, oh, I can't wait to use this, you know, in my practice with my patients and students. And I realized quickly that I didn't know how to use it. So I knew how to be a speech pathologist, right? I knew about these new apps, but I didn't know how to use the actual technology. So I take it out of the box and I'm looking at my kids, you know, what do we do? So I went online and I realized that uh, since 2010 is when the iPad, iPad had come out, so two years already, that there were other speech pathologists who had already started using it and they were doing blogs. And you could go to their blogs and read them and get information. But there were so many blogs and so many apps and so you had to jump around you know, to get this. So um, being an entrepreneur and always thinking of, I always say, better systems, sure. um, I came up with the idea to create yapguru.com, which is one um, kind of like a database. It looks like iTunes, but it's not. So you can go in and you can search for the apps. But then when you find an app, you can also find your blog and her blog and the other person's blog, and you can click on them and go to them quickly. And so then I also got these experts to come and do quick, smaller reviews on YapGuru. So rather than having this individual uh, sites where I mean you can yeah. you can spend a lot of time and effort mm -hmm. looking for them, then you go to your site yapguru.com, yeah. and that's where you find all of these all of these sites. Now, are there reviews for all these sites? Yes. I mean, are they, they yeah. categorized or start in some way? All of that. Did you create this? That's exactly what it is. So it's streamlining, right? Okay. So if you're going in, so as a speech pathologist, we are in so many different areas. We can do articulation, which is just that traditional speech therapy. Sure. We can do cognitive rehab. So someone who's been in a car accident and has had a major TBI, we're doing that type of therapy for the brain. We do swallowing. So there's all of these different areas. And then there's the ages. We can do from infants for feeding all the way through um, geriatrics and dementia. So there's such a breadth you know, of population and ages. So it categorizes it that way, so you can search that way. And then by bringing together the experts, we're also getting ratings. So a, um, between two or three different experts, they will rate on a, a, like a rubric, you know, yeah, from sure. one to five. And then we're also um, tapping into, because I really feel what's really important is the aggregate community. So like Yelp, you cannot buy the ratings, right? It's supposed to be that you go to a restaurant and all these sure. people community um, are rating, and that's what we did on Yap Guru. So we have two rating systems going on. So one would be an expert, a credible um, average rating of our experts, and the other one is just people using it. Hey, how do you like the app? The, the best rating is the actual feedback that you have to be getting from the users. Yes. Correct. Yes, exactly. I mean, from the end user. From, from the end from, user, from, from right. The, from the person that actually takes advantage of the technology. Right. Well, that's the problem that iTunes is having. So if you go there and you want to look at any app, or even right. in the Google Play, um, you don't know who is leaving those comments. So it could be your right. mother, your cousin, exactly. all these people that you, you know, had them come on. So the value is bringing together the experts in the industry. So I'm so excited about that because right now we have 24, 25 experts and they're in all different areas of speech. Um, we also have one occupational therapist. You know, I want to expand it to more. Um, but since we started here, we're now moving into creating online learning which is the new thing, e-learning, right? right? So what we're doing now is, so Yap Guru has been the, um, the value-added proposition. It's free. So there is no membership. You can access it at any time, and we make a whopping 7% from um, being affiliate from iTunes, which is not much because there's a lot of apps that are free. Right. Is that the only way you yeah. monetize your site? Exactly. Is, so that, is it a nonprofit? Or is it no, and that's what people work for say. Free? Yes, I unfortunately work for free. You want to come in and work here for free? I mean, I'm, My we're husband's always... not going to watch this, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, just yes. come over here and volunteer. It's that. been a labor of love, um, yeah. but what what has happened is we've created a credible brand. Right. You know, we, they know that the people that are doing the reviews there, they are experts. We've vetted them. We've looked at their blogs. You know, they're connecting their reviews. And so now what we're doing is we're taking that, um, the established community, and we're going to move it into e-learning into the broader space of special education. So what is the most interesting thing that you have found in this journey? Yeah. Something that you weren't expecting, that it was kind of a side benefit or a, or a side product of, of, of what you were doing? Um, you know, I had always had the idea of bringing together the experts 
into one pair to right. one place and and I know that typically they're nervous about that because of competitiveness yeah. but it's actually been so different I think that bringing them together has raised the awareness and the the value of, of what we're doing were you always an entrepreneur or, yes. di or did you work for corporate America and then you decided to come an entrepreneur Why yeah I've been in and out of working um, definitely I've worked I've gone back to school to become a speech pathologist um, but back when eBay first started yeah. I had a site called emommy.com and I did new and used maternity clothes and it was great and then and we moved to Arizona and I sold the business and it actually went on for a while. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. You, you just think a certain way. So what you're saying is that you are, you are born an entrepreneur. You cannot learn to be an entrepreneur. What do you think? Um, I think that I think, I think it's genetic. So I am almost three generations of being an entrepreneur. And, and I can tell from my children which one will be leaning more towards being an entrepreneur really? and, and not. Yes. What, what yeah. makes an entrepreneur? I think one of the things is that creativity of seeing a space or, or seeing the need and coming up with creative ideas about it. So that's the one piece. Right. The other part has to be the drive, the want to do something that there's no guarantee. You know, so it's your passion, it's your belief, it's your, you're willing to work on this at 3 o'clock in the morning because you believe in it. That's the entrepreneur. See, someone who's not a, an entrepreneur, they go, I work 9 to 5. I'm not available on Saturday. And that has happened when I say, you know, can I meet with you on Saturday? So, oh, I, I only work 9 to 5. We're done. You know, we're not, that's not the type of, of business that I can do right now, but I can right. tell that that person is also not in that space right now. They, they even might have a business. I've even seen that, people who have a business, but you're not, you're not hungry anymore. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. yeah. And, and so there are so many sites right now, so many organizations that are teaching you to be an exactly. entrepreneur. Exactly, ASU Entrepreneur Innovation, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Kimberly Rowland, a lover to death. Yeah. And so, I think what you're saying is what I'm hearing you say is that you have to be born with some type of or with entrepreneur the entrepreneurial bug. It's a if you drive. Will. I it's think that's what it it's is. It's something right? inside of you yep. that 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 just you can't turn off. Absolutely. You have to continue creating. Yes. Well, we've met numerous entrepreneurs that are into their third, fourth, fifth, tenth business. Yep. And, and you learn from the failures too. That's another thing is you are not an entrepreneur if you've created one business and it took off and that was it. An entrepreneur fails and I think it's from those failures or pivots, however you want to call it. You know, I started here and ended up there. I actually, um, I am so honored. I was just chosen to speak for the Phoenix um, Startup Week. Oh, and sure. So I'm one of the speakers and my, um, the title of my speak is, my speech is um, Give First because you know you picked up right away, how do you make money on that? Sure. And so it's very obvious that that was not my first goal. You right. know, this my idea was to bring this together, and I thought, you know, somewhere along the way, we'll figure out how to monetize, and we are just now going to be doing that. But that is the value of what we have created has created the brand first, the community. Um, the, everyone knows you have Guru in our industry now, so it's it's pretty amazing. You you took the build it and they will come approach, mm -hmm. and the more that I talk to entrepreneurs. That's kind of where the direction is. Let me give it for free, mm -hmm. or let me give my my information, my knowledge, and somehow or another, people will value that so much that they will want to be part of that tribe or that community. Exactly. That at some point you are going to figure out how to monetize. Right, and how dream. to build it too. They help you to do that. So when I first started in 2012, I kind of used that cliche of, I feel like it's like Facebook. You know, I don't know what it is yet. So I have never sold advertising on the site. So even though we are in this niche, I could have been tapping into, you know, app cases and, sure. you know, and even just um, doing ads from different apps. And I absolutely decided not to do that and just keep it pristine and trustworthy because once you start taking money, you know, from different places, then of course that's going to change judgment. What was there? Was there a uh, a moment that you can remember that you said, "Aha, uh -huh, this is what I need to do." Yes. Yeah. Take me, take me to that moment. That was last year um, when we started to, I, you know, I, I've always realized that this was not going to be the moneymaker. So it was like, you know, what are we doing? And it was when um, I started talking about, okay, everyone has iPads now in the classrooms. The staff have them and they don't know how to use them. So I said, you know, if I could just go in and start showing them how to do it. And then it just started to grow on that. I was like, you know what? That's what's happening is they need the direction. They really need the hands-on. So we have two products launching next year. And one of them is a, a six module training on how to actually use the iPad, the hardware, the software, and then bringing in 
um, speech, occupational therapy, vision therapy, all of that so that even someone who is a paraprofessional can go through this course and then be able to sit with that child or with that person and be able to support them. Because I think everyone thinks that you sure. just take the iPad, give it to someone, it's this magic you know, thing that's just going to happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen. Right. So then that brought me to the next piece of, well, how could we do this on a huge scale? Because yeah. now, I think as I'm getting older, I'm understanding what think big means, you know, beyond, beyond little Phoenix, right? So how can we get beyond this? How can we go internationally? Sure. And that's the online learning. And so I started delving into that, and e-learning is just exploding. Do you know uh, Doug uh, Bronte from the Global Chamber? No. I'm going to have to introduce you okay. to him because you're talking about going global. Yes. And uh, Doug was one of our guests here in Entrepreneurs of Fuego. Mm -hmm. And he can open the world yeah. for you. That's amazing. And so before you go, I will connect you with him. And this, this is part of our show. This is part of what we do. The entrepreneurs that are coming here to tell their stories, to tell your journey, which by the way, let me ask you the million dollar question. I mean, what is the hardest challenge that you faced? Either on this particular journey or... Um, I'm gonna cry. My hardest challenge has been finding the right partner. Um, so I have two girls who came, started with me. Um, they're both speech pathologists. Yes. And I begged them on back in 2012 and I had no idea what I was gonna be doing or what we were gonna be doing. Um, and you were asking them to take a leap of faith. Right, to but, trust you. To, right, to, and to give me their time, which actually yeah. to them was more valuable than money. Right? Right. So there was no monetary investment. Right. And I said, you know, I don't know where this is gonna go, but do this with me. And they both had expertise in different areas. So they are both 5%, right? Which I had no idea what that even means. So here we are. I had 100% of nothing at that point, right? right? So, okay, let's do this. And over the years now, this is 2012 till now, I have, you know, I've, I've kind of grown this to be so much more than what we started with, right? And I realized I couldn't do this by myself. And these two women are fantastic, but they're not business people, they're not entrepreneurs, and that's okay, but that's what I needed. And so here I am, I'm trying not to cry because I have, and I say dated, I have dated so many amazing business people, but they weren't, they weren't right for what I wanted, they weren't right for my vision. I had people who have offered us money, which is fantastic, but I said, I don't need money, I need help. And that's the piece, and when I tell you this, I now have, we have a partner with Think Global Institute, do you know them? They, uh, they were in the Valley last fall and they did a, um, a uh, what do they call it, a, like a think group okay. with ASU yeah. and they, did, uh, they worked with women and so they had 10 thinkers and I actually didn't qualify for that but I met with them and mentored with them and now they're partnering with me. And oh. it is so different when someone else is thinking about your business the same way that you are. You know, someone else is coming to the table with an idea or they're thinking bigger than you or, you know, it's just someone who's right there next to you I can't even tell you, and that's the word is I'm not alone anymore. I'll feel your pain, sister. Oh, and I know a lot of entrepreneurs do because it's your dream. You know, you're the only one who cares, and that's true. Finding <laughs> the right partner yes. is one of the most difficult things. Yep. One of the most difficult is like a marriage. It really is. And it really is. There's so much that goes on into that. It's very hard. Yep. But anyway, look, I, I really appreciate you coming into the show and sharing with us all your information. The sad thing about this show is that we only have 10 to 15 minutes. I could go on. <laughs> well, and, I, and I think that, you know, because the information yeah. there is so, so terrific and so the little tidbits, you know, that, that we get from you, you know, finding the right partner, uh, never giving up, you know, pursuing your dream, um, you know, having that entrepreneurial bug inside. I mean, all of those things are incredibly important. And the people that are watching this, the people that are looking, looking at this, this show, you're going to say, you know what? Yeah, I can relate to that. It's amazing. And Thank you for giving me this time. And, really. and maybe, and remember, I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up with Doug. I mean, I, I already did yesterday with, uh, with this uh, phenomenal lady that has 40 years in international consulting and wow. hooked her up with Doug and they're off and running. So Excellent. we'll do the same thing. If you want to go global, this is the man. Excellent. But this show is all about you, Mei Ling, and I really appreciate you coming on to the show today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. My, you. my pleasure. And with that, we're out. <laughs> <laughs>